Welcome to another edition of CUTV's In The Huddle. I'm Jacob Russell, and I'm accompanied by my panel of In The Huddle analysts, Cecilio Ramirez and Brock Bodie. As it starts getting a little chillier outside, fall sports are wrapping up. Basketball's on the way, but we have some updates on all the Aggie sports events this past week. We'll talk Aggie cross country, volleyball, and golf on today's show. Also, the MLB's postpones the World Series for the first time ever. In the Huddle is next on CUTV. The Aggie cross country team has only one more meet remaining in their 08 season. The team competed against the other eight cross country programs at the Lone Star Conference Championship in Kingsville, Texas. CU finished sixth in the tournament. The Abilene Christian University Wildcats were crowned with the LSC men's cross country title for the 18th year in a row. They have 24 all time. Sophomore Mohamed Khalafa barely missed the top 10, finishing 12th with a time of 24 59. His improvement showed he was able to cut more than a minute off of his season best of a race at 7,700 meters. Three other Cameron runners finished in the top 50. Freshman Edwin Chelishaw finished 21st and senior Mudasar Haidat finished 25th. Freshman Juan Ruiz was also able to finish 45th overall. Jamin Jones was able to participate in the race after overcoming mononucleosis. Top runners Josh Stewart and Mark Merritt will be unable to finish the season, however, as they are still battling the illness. The Aggies' next and last competition will be held in San Antonio, Texas for the NCAA South Central Regional Championship. The event is scheduled for Saturday, November 8th. After sweeping Eastern New Mexico three games to none, the Aggie volleyball team fell back under 500 against West Texas A&M. CU is the first Lone Star Conference team to actually win a set off of West Texas. Cameron was outkilled 59 to 42 and outblocked 13 to 6 against the nationally ranked number three Lady Buffs. They're ranked number one in the Lone Star Conference. Junior setter Laura Ellerbrock was the defensive player of the game for the Aggies as she recorded a team high with 13 defensive digs and 37 assists. Three out of the five remaining matches for this season are home games. Make sure you come out and support the Aggie volleyball team as they battle to secure a spot at the LSC Championship Tourney. Currently, the team is ninth in the conference, but only the top eight teams will advance to the postseason. Cameron's next home match is Tuesday at 7 at the Aggie Gym versus Oklahoma Panhandle State University. There will be a live broadcast of the game on goaggies.cameron.edu. Just visit the website and click on the Aggie Video Network icon. Play-by-play -play coverage begins five minutes prior to the first set. The Cameron Cheerleader Squad occasionally gives back to the community by cheering at different high school football games. Monday night, the squad was accompanied by Old Kim as they cheered Rush Springs High School Redskins at home against Hilton High. The CU Cheerleaders have also cheered for Temple High School Tigers this season. The Aggie women's golf team is coming off an eighth place finish after hosting the annual Oklahoma Intercollegiate Golf Tournament in Duncan. Last year, the Aggies finished six out of 13 schools. This year there were 12 teams, but CU did manage to tie their second best cumulative score for the season. Junior Cass McGrath was Cameron's only top 10 finisher with a 7th place finish and a 2 round score of 151. She was also the only CU golfer to record a below 80 round. Next up for Aggies Women's Golf is the St. Edwards Invitational in Austin, Texas, scheduled for the first three days of March. Cameron will have plenty of time to prepare and do a lot of technical training to improve their short game. The Aggie men's golf team finished in the top five at the Indian Bayou Classic in Destin, Florida. CU was able to step up their game in the second round and finish with a total team score of 604. Coach Jerry Hernshire says putting is still the team's biggest problem. Junior Michael Lee was Cameron's top finisher with a 147. Junior Brett Lavelle finished with a 148 and also had a second round score good enough for CU's lowest round of the tournament. Senior Peter Svalen is finally on his way back from the World Amateur Team Championships in Adelaide, Australia. Svalen led his home country of Slovakia to a tie for 44th place in the 65 country tournament. He finished individually in a tie for 78th place. Scotland won the event with a team score of 560. And Ricky Fowler of Oklahoma State and the USA won the individual championship with a 280. Aggie Golf's next tournament is scheduled for March 12th through 14th at the Sam Houston State Intercollegiate in Woodlands, Texas. If you want to build real strength, shoulders may be a good place to start. Shoulders and back are the foundation that for body strength. 
Check out these techniques to building a strong upper body. When it comes to building strong, powerful shoulders, you don't want to overdo it. The shoulders respond well to a simple workout routine. There's no need to perform countless unnecessary reps. In fact, you're better off mastering the classic barbell overhead press. Most trainers will tell you that the barbell should be pressed past your forehead and then you drive your head forward and shrug your shoulders, squeezing your traps together. This will help you push the bar up and back so it ends up over the center line of your body. It also maximizes the amount of muscle tissue involved in the lift. Hold this for one second at the top and then lower the bar back down the shoulder level. Perform shoulder presses like this twice a week for three weeks, completing five sets of 12, 10, 8, 6, and 4 reps. Rest in 45 seconds between each set. Keeping you in shape, I'm Rob Bodie reporting for CUTV Sports. So anyway, for the first time ever, the World Series has been canceled due to some rain in, in Philly. Yeah, um, first time it's ever happened, it ended in a 2-2 side. There was a lot of speculation going uh, throughout the game on whether, they, whether or not they should have even let it play. The temperature for today's game, the remake, is supposed to be in the 30s all day. Possible snow, definite sleet, 20% chance by the time that the game continues. So. I don't see really much of a choice. I'm pretty sure they had to get the game played when they did. Yeah, they should have. I don't really think the chances tonight are going to be least likely to play than they yeah, were. But they, got, they got to get the game finished. Yeah, anyway, uh, last night was Monday night. Today's Tuesday. We always talk about Monday night football. Uh, Kerry Collins is in the top ten for most completions, just surpassed uh, Joe Montana. Yeah. You wouldn't think you'd hear both those names together. Definitely not, but Kerry Collins, he's, he's a consummate professional. He's been around the league a long time. He knows what to do. He knows what it takes to win. But another thing that he did that hasn't been done since 1985, it's the first time a team's gone 7-0 and with a starting quarterback who has yet to throw for over 200 yards in a game. Now, I know he hates to, hates to be coined with the term a manager, a game manager, because he is a playmaker, definite, because there's throws on third down he can make that a lot mm -hmm. of quarterbacks can't. But he managed the clock well, and with a running game like they had, that's all you need to do. Yeah, and he has some prior experience. I mean, he won a division with Carolina, and now he's leading the – Tennessee Titans 6-0, and, 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 and he's the backup quarterback to Vince Young. Definitely. I mean, he's, he's under 500 as a career win-loss win for a starter, but this is his team. He's got the reins. Vince Young will be the starter in years to come, and it's Kerry Collins last year in his contract, so maybe next year, but yeah. we'll see. So you got a top player of the week this week, Brock? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with Michael Crabtree for the uh, Texas Tech. I expect him to do a lot of damage against Texas this week, this Saturday. Uh, I think that we're going to see him tear through the lines of Texas. I hope we see an upset. I've never rooted for a Texas team more than I have now, just like OSU last week. Yeah. yeah. So who's your top player this week? Another um, baseball player? It is again. It is. I'm going to have to go with Carlos Pena and Evan Longoria. Going into last night's game, they were 0 for 31 in the World Series, which is huge because Longoria hit five in the rest of the playoffs. But uh, they finally broke that slump. They knocked in the run and made it 2 to 1. So in order for Tampa Bay to even have a chance of coming back, these two guys need to step up and play what they're capable of. So I really look forward to that being the key to the rest of the World Series. Okay. Uh, I'd have to pick uh, Kerry Collins from the game last night. I, th I think he did a phenomenal job, and I think uh, the Tennessee Titans defense really put Peyton Manning in, in a frustration yeah. game. Yeah, Peyton doesn't look like himself. He, yeah. he doesn't trust his knee yet. He can't play yeah, I mean, throw. He's off with his receivers. But, I mean, time will come. And, and they're, let's see, they're a quarter of the way. or halfway through the season. Four games out of first, which is a quarter of the season. So they have half a season to make up a quarter of the season. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah. In other news, NBA basketball does begin tonight. I hear you hating on my Boston Celtics, but they are the champs from last year, and they should have a good season this Anything year. Anything is possible, yeah. Anything is possible. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. It's a lot of big off-season moves. I don't know. Well, yeah. It's it's 82-game season. We'll see what pans out. Yeah, I, st I still think they could take over the Eastern Conference, but you still got big hitters in the Western Conference, Definitely. like the L.A. Lakers who made the finals last year, and they got returning players like Andrew Bynum coming back to the lineup. Definitely. Definitely a powerhouse. Yeah. Definitely. We'll, we'll see. We'll see coming up this week. Thanks for joining us again here at the CUTV studio. We want to remind you that all our CUTV shows are now playing on YouTube. Just go to YouTube.com and type in CU Internet TV with no spaces. Remember, the premiere of CUTV's first telenovela, Pasión Universitaria, is this week. Also, make sure to check out a very special Halloween episode of the Film Geek Show. Indiana Jones and Jason co-host a very unique digital set. The Film Geek also gives its top seven horror movie movements of all time. And don't forget, next week we will be having live coverage of our election night broadcast. Our, start, our broadcast starts at 6 o'clock. I want to do a quick shout out to the track stars. I hope they get better from their illnesses for the season. It's sad that they're missing the end. Uh, this has been Jacob Russell. This has been Brock Bodie. And Cecilia Ramirez. Until next time, have a happy Halloween. We'll see you in the huddle.